Welcome to episode number 93 of Success Superstars and my special guest, Jesse Lopez from the San Antonio, Texas market. Jesse, welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so glad to, to have you. And, you know, you have a special place in my heart because I know you're working with military families in Fort Sam Houston and all of the military guys there in San Antonio. And that was my first assignment right out of college with San Antonio. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit, what did you do before real estate? So I was also in the military. Uh, I served 23 years in the Air Force and I was born and raised in San Antonio, mm -hmm. actually in the South Side. Uh, once I joined the military, my first duty station was also here in San Antonio. <laughs> so I, I did, uh, I served four years at Lackland Air Force Base. As soon as I was done with that, I got shipped off to Germany. Mm -hmm. which uh which started my overseas career uh i won't bore you with all the details of every places all the places that i've been at but basically i've lived all over europe the middle east uh and the southwest part or excuse me the southeast part of the united states mm -hmm. well thank you for your service first of all yeah thanks and where was your favorite place to live uh i really enjoyed germany Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed it because I got to travel a lot to Holland. Holland is my favorite country in the world. So right. if I could live anywhere, it'd be there. Uh, second favorite place is Spain. We've been to Spain quite a bit, and uh, I just enjoy every minute of it. What was it about Holland that you enjoyed so much? Uh, it, they just seemed very health-minded, mm -hmm. health-conscious. Like It's funny, the first time I went up there, I was TDY, and when I got there, it was late in the evening. We got our hotel room. We got situated. And the next morning when I woke up, there were these bikes just all over the place. And right. they weren't like bikes like in the United States. They were like those Pee Wee Herman bikes, right? Like the right. Big, big wheels, you know. And, and it was just, it was, some, it was a sight to see. Like I was really impressed. And everybody was commuting, but everybody was commuting on bicycles. So right. I just thought that was really nice. Uh, other things about Holland that I like is just there's a lot of farmland and the people are just very generous and and very uh hospitable so that's that's what i really like about holland yeah that's awesome well let's fast forward to today at at jpar and you're going to close out the year with 36 closed transactions that's a pretty amazing year i know you have a little bit more to go to reach that goal so the last mm -hmm. uh, uh six to eight weeks of the year is going to be really important to you but how have you gone about basically, you know, starting at zero and building a business up to 36 closings a year? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, it's just it's just talking to people and just having those conversations and whether they're the ones that are looking to buy or sell a home or they know somebody like you have to have those conversations mm -hmm. or else nobody will ever know. It's funny when I first got my real estate license people would talk about the secret agent, right? right. And honestly, I was a secret agent for about six months into my career, my real estate career, but I was also going to school. I didn't really talk to people and tell them that I was a, a realtor, but when I figured that out, then I started talking to people and, and the conversations got better and better. And, you know, they would refer me, oh, talk to so-and-so, they're, they're thinking about it, or, you know, it, they were just the connection. So some something that I always tell people when I talk to them, uh, other agents is, you know, don't think of them as an end all be all, but they're just a conduit that will connect you to people that are interested in real estate. Because think about all the people you know, all the people that I know, but with one touch, I can refer you to, you know, thousands of people that I know that may be interested in real estate. So I kind of keep that in the back of my head and just have the conversation. Yeah. Now you're very unique. You do and use video and leverage video very well, more than uh, most agents that I know. So how did you get into video? How do you use it? And how effective has it been for you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been very effective. So how did I get into it? When I was in Germany, when I got stationed in Germany, uh, I went out to visit a castle my first weekend. And the first thing I could think of is this country is beautiful. If you've ever been to Germany, you know, you'll see these castles and the backdrops are all these mountains and it's just a very picturesque, right? 
growing up, my mother wasn't a photographer, but she always had one of those Polaroids. So she was always like, get over here, you know, and taking pictures. But she kind of instilled something in me uh, as far as capturing the moment. So when I saw that for myself, I was like, wow, I have to buy a camera. Like that was my first instinct, right? So between 91, when I started doing photography, uh, I was an amateur, but I just kept doing it. And uh, as my career grew and I started, even when I was going to Iraq and Afghanistan, I always took a camera with me because I always wanted to take, you know, freeze those moments in time. And uh, when I got ready to retire 23 years later, I told my wife, I don't want to work. Like, I, I just don't want to work. I've, I've done 23 years in the military. I'm good. But I, I knew I needed to keep myself occupied. So I already had cameras. And I said, you know what? Let me just do photography full time. So I started doing photography full time. I was uh, photographing quinceañeras, uh, weddings, you know, senior pictures, you know, for graduation, that kind of stuff. So anyway, I, I, I accumulated all of this equipment and it's not cheap. Like there, I have probably about $40,000 worth of equipment. Mm -hmm. And then when I made the transition to real estate, I was like, you know what? I know how to do photography. I know how to do video. Why not leverage what I already know into what I, what I'm going to do. So uh, initially I was a little, uh, what's the word? I, I was misconceived with the thought that, oh, just the ph photography and the video will win me over. I didn't realize the journey I was going to go into. But, um, yeah, it's not just as simple as taking a picture or doing a short video. Like, you have to really understand the, the um, what do you call it, the psychology behind it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in a nutshell, I took something that I already knew and I leveraged it to kind of catapult me past a lot of, a lot of agents. I wouldn't say all agents because there's some agents that do a lot of video, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's how I got into it. So what's the secret? What have you learned of how to transition a photo to a video to helping someone take action? What, what's the difference between just posting a picture and posting something that's going to engage? <laughs> that's a great question. So I always tell people human beings are inherently lazy, right? Mm -hmm. I hate to read. I, I'll read a book every now and then but I hate to read. If you give me some pictures, I'll choose the pictures over reading. Mm -hmm. But if you give me a movie, I'm all over it. I'm going to sit there and watch it. So I think people prefer to watch a video because it's more engaging uh, than reading a book. Like if you, again, in the military, you have all these instructions, you have these standard operating procedures. Mm -hmm. If they would have just shown me a movie, I'd be like, yeah, this is great. Uh, but I just think that Again, understanding how people operate, you can use that to, to, you know, to put yourself ahead. Think about it when you're when even when you're on social media, you're scrolling through your phone. Mm -hmm. Where is it that you stop? Typically a video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. So you're leveraging video, you're leveraging uh, photography skills uh, and generating uh, quite a bit of referrals and, and uh, leads into your business. Now, as you look into 2020, what are you looking to stand on, make better, improve? Okay, so that that um, that's a secret, right? <laughs> so I let's rewind a little bit to when I started real estate. I think I I started doing transactions, and I became what people call the transactional agent, right? Like I was going from transaction to transaction, which isn't a bad thing in itself. However, I think I left a lot on the table back in the beginning because I didn't leverage uh, everything that I could against past clients. So you didn't leverage the relationship. You leveraged the transaction. Exactly. Right. So what I uh, what I quickly found out, this is a few months ago, really, is that I needed to, to go back and set up my systems and set up, you know, processes where I can touch them because I didn't realize how infrequent I was talking to my clients until I called them and I'd call them and they'd be like, Hey, it's been three months since we talked. And I'm like, Oh my God, three months. That's eternity. Right. Um, so for 2020, I, I mean, I would not be surprised if I had three times what I do this year because I'm working on my systems now mm -hmm. so I can be top of mind. 
so I can, you know, add that value so they remember me. So, yeah, that's I think that's uh, the way for 2020 for me. Uh, so what's one thing you can share? What system are you putting in place, improving, making better that, that will uh, keep you uh, top of mind with folks? This sounds so elementary, but my database. Mm -hmm. Like the statistics show that most agents don't use their database. Right. And it's funny because I was the other day, I said, hey, I want to I want to send an email to my clients. And now that I fix my database as far as just right. categorizing and I can now hyper focus on a client and send them an email or a group of clients or I can hyper focus to business partners or I can hyper focus to new home sales reps, you know, whatever the group is. Um, if if I would have if I would have wanted to know something early in real estate, it would have been that to like really be diligent with your database, right. figure it out, and then live and die by it. Because now I I can reach out to anybody in my in my group in my database based on what category they're in. Yeah, for sure, the database is huge. Now, yeah. uh, obviously, so working on your database, getting that uh, lined up, and then obviously leveraging your your video content. So as we wrap up this episode, is there any last words of wisdom you'd like to share with the audience about uh, building a successful business? Uh, I, I think what I did and kind of like my, one of my pillars of, of business is I'm just, I, I'm knowledgeable, but I'm real, right? Like I, I would rather walk away from a transaction knowing that I was truthful and you know, I try to bring value because any anybody can manipulate numbers and tell you what you want to hear. But I think it's better to to forego the transaction and not have to have that conversation, you know, four or five months down the road. Right. Because at that point, I think people would lose confidence, and that's why I think you know transactions get canceled, they expire. Not to say that I have never had one because I had I've had an expired twice, same yeah. home, but that's a whole different story. Um, but I, I think again, the fundamentals just, and I think about this cause yesterday we had the, uh, retirement ceremony for, um, what's his name for, uh, Tony Parker of Spurs. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think about those players in basketball, they are good at the fundamentals, mm -hmm. right? And our fundamentals are getting our systems together, you know, talking to our, our clients and providing value. So. That's what I would recommend or, you know, advise somebody that comes into real estate is to do that. Be diligent, set up your system, set up your database, and then just keep in touch. That's it. Be human. Be real. Be real. Be uh, genuine and authentic. Yeah, definitely. Well, Jesse, it's been such a pleasure spending some time with you. I appreciate you sharing your, your journey uh, with the audience. And we'll see you soon on another episode of Success Superstars.